So we're coming to the end of the course. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about how I spend my time in the research community in computer science. I study something called natural language processing. And it turns out that a lot of the ideas you've been learning in this course are directly relevant to the work that I do. So natural language processing is uh, the field of applying computers to natural language, that is, the kinds of languages that humans use to communicate, English, Spanish, Chinese, etc. And unlike programming languages, natural languages are ambiguous, which means that they could have different structure and different meaning depending on interpretation, even for the same string. So there is syntactic ambiguity as illustrated in these headlines. Teacher strikes idle kids. It was meant to be that there are teacher strikes and that leaves the kids idle, but there's also mean teachers in the world. Hospitals are sued by seven foot doctors, podiatrists. There's also semantic ambiguity. So I call this syntactic ambiguity because of its structure. So teacher strikes is supposed to go together, but the ambiguous or alternate uh, interpretation of this would be that strikes idle kids is one verb phrase and teacher is just uh, the noun. Uh, the ambiguity here is whether you have foot doctors or you have seven foot. So those are structural ambiguity. Semantic ambiguity is just because words have many meanings. Iraqi head seeks arms. Stolen painting found by tree. What a nice tree. Okay, so the point here is that each word in a language can have different meanings depending on context and when we l listen to language, we're able as humans to disambiguate which meaning is intended at an extremely reliable and impressive rate. Whereas computers have a really hard time because they see arms and they don't know whether this is arms of a body or arms meaning weapons. And there are very few clues here in order to tell it which. In fact, since it says head, it seems like we just have a bunch of body parts. So this is the kind of thing that would confuse a computer. Okay, so natural language processing is focused on particular tasks. What do you want to do with language? Well, let me give you an overview of some of the important ones. So research typically focuses on tasks that involve processing input language in some way, such as answering questions. So IBM built a program called the Watson. It was given the following Jeopardy question. Harriet Boyd Hawes was the first woman to discover and excavate a Minoan settlement on this island. And Watson said, what is Crete? Machine translation is another task. So if you type in call a spade a spade into Google Translate and say, please give me some French equivalent, it will figure out that uh, even though spade translates as something else, French people don't say call a spade a spade. They say call a cat a cat. That's just their colloquial way of expressing the same meaning. And so uh, that's exactly what we get. Un chat, un chat. Uh, semantic parsing is meant to figure out what's the meaning of an expression in some procedural language that could then be executed on a computer. So if you say, when's my birthday to Siri, it's up to Siri to understand this as a query on a database of information that it knows, which includes birthdays. And then it should be able to construct the sentence, your birthday is May 1st. So these are various end-to-end -end natural language processing tasks. Most of the research is actually focused on smaller tasks that are targeted issues that show up in these end-to-end -end tasks. So these are language analysis problems. You want to figure out in a sentence that says Barack Obama traveled blah 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 and the president found that his hotel accommodations were wonderful, whether Barack Obama and the president co-refer to the same person or not. So that's co-reference resolution. There's another task called syntactic parsing, which is meant to figure out the structure of sentences. So if you have the sentence, I saw the man with the telescope, do you see a man using a telescope or did you see a man who was holding a telescope? So who has the telescope? Well, that will be determined by where you decide to attach with the telescope, which is called the prepositional phrase. Is it modifying man or is it modifying saw? 
And finally, there's a task called word sense disambiguation. So if I see the phrase bank of the sin, does that have an ATM or not? So is this a bank that's a river bank or a bank that's a financial institution? In this case, it's probably a river bank since sin is a river. But also, by the way, Bank of the Sin is the name of a famous painting. So there's another task called Named Entity Recognition, where you're trying to look at a sentence and figure out what are all the named entities, or persons, places, things, institutions, that show up in the sentence. So what names are in, did Van Gogh paint the Bank of the Sin? Well, he did. And Bank of the Sin is the name of a painting. Van Gogh is the name of a painter. And notice there are some tricky issues here. So, for instance, Van Gogh doesn't start with a capital V because that's how his name is typically expressed in English. So, sometimes there are easy cues that you can use, but sometimes you have to do some deeper analysis or know something about the world in order to get these tasks right.